Hey guys, Randy Potato here to review the latest patch, Obsession's Gaze, including the new act boss, along with the future of Darkest Dungeon 2, with a 1.0 release scheduled for February. Obsession's Gaze is a relatively smaller update compared to the last patch, Altar of Hope, only adding the new act and act boss, along with small gameplay changes, visual audio UI upgrades, and optimizations. First up, Red Hook have now expanded hero goals, so all heroes will begin the run with a challenge to complete, scaling from simple to hard, and coming with corresponding candle rewards. These are fun, but until we get something to spend candles on late game, it's somewhat pointless once you're done unlocking stuff. Hopefully the devs will add something. I would like to be able to spend points to start with a random item in your inventory, like with the working fields before you're fully unlocked. They've added more region modifiers, which helps keep a game like this more interesting, doing the same five biomes over and over. They've also added region variations, which is purely cosmetic, but really enhances the experience in my opinion, especially since they've also increased cart speed, so atmosphere doesn't have to get in the way of the game. Relationship act outs will no longer consume crit or strength tokens, which is a small but great change to further lower the RNG element of relationships in general. A few cultist changes. First, of course, they added the new altar buff for Act 3, which gives a chance of enemies generating taunt on round start. This is less devastating than the crit bonus in Act 2, but it's quite obnoxious to work around and requires some strategic maneuvering. Act 1's altar buff can now generate two stealth tokens, a large annoyance, and make stealth removal slightly more relevant for those of you still running Act 1. Bone weaving will now remove blind tokens in Act 3, further nerfing a token already nerfed by a number of the bosses, including the new Act boss. Moving the Evangelist and Cherub is now a stronger play, as their respective out-of-position attacks now only move them one rank instead of two, meaning you can keep them out of position longer. In addition, their out-of-position attacks now have a much lower chance of applying worship in the Deacon, Cardinal, and Exemplar fights. The Shroud's Leviathan's Breath now has a chance to heal stress once it lifts, which is a nice change. I'd still like to see a similar mechanic for each biome, instead of having the Shroud remain arbitrarily harder. We have a ton of audio and visual enhancements, which is great for the game, but not relevant for me at the moment. What is relevant is how much faster they've made the game, from the coach upgrade to the quicker token stacking. This is extremely important for making this game much less of a slog to play. I still want them to shrink region 4, and we'd be getting closer to a good length for a roguelite. On the last two hotfixes, we got a few gameplay changes. They doubled the heal from Stitching Kit, a necessary but insufficient upgrade to make it useful. Still just a relic dump if you happen to end up with a bad provisioner right before the mountain. They also nerfed Toe to Toe Plus, giving it one less taunt token, which I dislike especially since it was likely just changed for the Act 3 boss. One change that's similar to what I've been asking for is Hero Deathblow Resist now acts like the enemies. With each death store check, your Deathblow Resist goes down 10% for the fight. I'll wait and see how it plays out, but I feel like this in conjunction with the overall DBR nerf, and especially the nerf against the Act bosses, might make this too punishing, especially for newer players without access to the Altar Permanent Hero upgrades. One or the other seems sufficient. I would actually like them to buff overall DBR and make your DBR drop off with each check and have that lower death blow carry over the course of your run instead of resetting each fight. Would make the runs a lot more strategic early and increase the overall risk factor. Now we move on to the Act 3 boss, the Focused Fault. Easily the most controversial boss they've released. They've already patched him twice. If you haven't already figured out the mechanic, the first phase only ends when you allow all the eyes to grow to full size and phase two is the actual boss. The main gimmick is each of the eyes in the first phase will put a token on your heroes, which will be removed upon the eyes quote unquote death, allowing you to attempt to rearrange tokens onto your tanks. The first iteration was extremely easy once the mechanic was solved, and I and others even beat it blind. The phase 2 boss only had 150 HP, no death blow resist, and would only attack heroes with the phase 1 tokens on them. They've made a number of changes in the two most recent hotfixes. They buffed his HP to 250 and gave him an extra skill that will heavily debuff all heroes without the focus token. They've also buffed the eyes in the first phase, therefore making it easier to spawn phase 2, while making it slightly harder to kill the eyes to rearrange the tokens. They've also added barks in the first phase to lead players along into what they're actually supposed to be doing. I've not played the most recent hotfix, but my guess is it's still a much easier boss than the Psy, and potentially the Brain, and simply adding HP and an extra non-damaging skill does not change the fight from being a boring damage race that you always win if phase 1 is done correctly. It's good they've made phase 1 a real solvable puzzle, but it's still uninteresting to me, especially on subsequent playthroughs. I just don't feel like long term I'll feel fulfilled defeating the Act 3 boss like I do with the Psy without an overhaul to the fight. But the buffs may make it challenging enough eventually, so we'll have to see. Moving beyond the most recent patch, let's talk about Darkest Dungeon 2's future. With monthly updates, we only have two more early access patches until the 1.0 release. 
Known major content we're still waiting on is two more acts, the fifth one will release on 1.0, a full relationship system overhaul, and a few more heroes. We're also getting pets, more wandering bosses, collectors confirmed returning. This alongside new stagecoach mechanics and additional biome variation. This is a lot of content to add by February, and based on the amount of content in this current patch, my hope is they delay a few months. Although I do have all the faith in the world in Red Hook to deliver a great 1.0 experience, regardless of the full scope. My biggest current concern is the lack of heroes, which greatly limits the variety of team comps. There is an overall lack of reliable healers, rank 4 heroes, and heroes that reliably nuke enemy rank 4. We will not get this on release, but my hope is DD2 long term with updates and DLCs is a roster that surpasses DD1, along with a good variety of newcomers beyond the one we have with the Runaway. They have currently indicated we will not get another biome, at least right away, and instead we got new cultists, which are fantastic, along with future promises for new enemies and expansions of current faction. I believe this game needs at least one more biome long term, so my hope is that it becomes a DLC. In addition, I would like to further differentiate acts by putting at least one act unique enemy per biome, similar to DD1 having unique enemies based on dungeon difficulty level. They have not yet indicated this is in their plans to my knowledge. This, along with performance related updates, which I know will be coming, will make Darkest Dungeon 2 a long lasting and well reviewed game, just like DD1. In regards to my own channel, the plan is to push out hero guides for all characters, guides to all biomes, I have already reviewed the Tangle, guides to every act boss, the Act 3 guide will be coming next Friday, along with more in-depth guides on current upcoming mechanics, such as relationships, shop strategy, and more beginner-friendly content, all before the 1.0 release. So in the coming weeks, be on the lookout for guide videos not only on Fridays, but potentially on Tuesdays. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I post Darkest Dungeon 2 content every day.